Welcome. You have entered the realm of 1111 Talk Radio. Your host is Simron. It's time to discover your own language with the universe. Empower yourself. Broaden your mind. Open your heart and discover who you are. Now, here's your host, Simron. It is a joy to be with you again this week, and we have quite the show planned. I'm looking forward to it. My own quest in life has always been for my humanity. It has been to touch and reach those places of feeling and the discovery of places that I have not known. I've always believed that first we must find the known within us, and then we must let that go to discover the unknown. Life is a continuous spiral from the dawn of time, and the divine weaves through that spiral as we move through all of the different types of experiences and expressions that life offers, as we also shift through the ebbs and the flows that life will bring our way. And as we move forward, within each of us is seated a divine spark, a remembrance and a knowing of the truth of not only who we are, from the soul sense, but what we are. And it is that trajectory that we have been on since that dawn of time. My guest today is Steve Farrell, and he is uh, has attained the pinnacle of success as a Silicon Valley entrepreneur, founding two high-tech firms. Then he pivoted to lead Humanities Team a global nonprofit helping people everywhere awaken to our interconnectedness through platforms such as their new Humanity Stream Plus streaming service. Steve's new book, A New Universal Dream, details his journey from a young entrepreneur to a life in service to humanity. There's so many beautiful nuggets within this book, not only from the humanity of his own life and the different things that he navigated through, but also beautiful moments of that ebb and flow, synchronicity, where signs showed up, where the right people came across his path, and ultimately what led him to co-found this beautiful organization. Humanity's team was founded in June 2003 in Wilsonville, Oregon, and it is a 501c3 nonprofit focused on sharing the following essential truths. We are all one with God universe, each other, and all of life. God is not judging or condemning, but is instead pure love in service to and empowering all of life. The properties of God universe are our properties, including eternal life. The universe is non-dual and in unity and harmony. For them, education is a key to social change. So Humanity's team has created a revolutionary <clears throat> conscious streaming <clears throat> excuse me streaming community and platform to share many forms of education supporting our conscious journey. These programs are part of their mission to make conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040. Within the book, Steve talks a lot about wealth, a lot about purpose, and very much about service. He says, the trappings of wealth aren't inherently evil. Being famous or admired by others is a common fantasy, but the relentless pursuit of the American dream is an unhealthy trap because no amount of wealth or success can ever be enough. We can find ourselves pitted against others who are pursuing the same dream while holding the belief that there isn't enough to go around, so someone else must lose for us to win. The crises of our modern world, global warming, viruses, endless wars, and political upheaval have shaken some people out of our pursuit of that kind of dream. We have begun to focus on more important things. The truth is that we are all part of the same divine whole, not in competition with each other, but in collaboration. The only way for us to win anything is if the whole of humanity is lifted and elevated. Welcome, Steve, to 1111 Talk Radio. Simran, thank you so much for having me, and wow, thank you for that generous introduction. I really appreciate it. Most definitely. I enjoyed weaving through the book and not only discovering more about you and your story, but the unfolding of 
how you led your own business into conscious business, into expanding in ways that you included those within your company in discovering places where you knew not to sell or to sell or where to expand or not to expand. And so it sounds like you've really lived a life where you have followed the moment, stayed where you are, and taken leaps of faith based on trusting your gut and your intuition. Yeah, well, I, I would say uh, that's true. I, you know, we, we all have that still small voice within, and then we all experience this worldly noise, our family, our friends, our coworkers that that want to guide us to more material success. And uh, when we pay attention to that still small voice, when we're led by it, guided by it, supported by it, uh, this is where we find this incredible, um, what I call new universal dream, where we uh, live into something that's that's beautiful and that we can find from any home in, in any region of the world. And as you mentioned, my journey took me through Silicon Valley uh, which is the the land of the American dream. And so I had a front row seat right there in in uh, where in in all of this wealth creation. And I can tell you that is not where we find uh, joy and a de- and a delicious way of living our life. As you mentioned, it's when when we climb that ladder into fame and fortune and success and financial success, uh, what we find, is this mirage, this oasis that's constantly moving out on the horizon. You get to 100 million in revenue, and then it moves to 200 million in revenue, 200, and it moves to 400. Uh, There's no there there. (laughs) And in conscious living, we, we find that there. I mean, right in this moment, as we breathe into it, if you have a window and you're looking out on nature, the beauty in in this moment and every moment is is here and it's always here. Uh, there's it's not out on the horizon. It's not a it's not a mirage. Um, let me also share that I think that there's a certain weariness that many are experiencing. Even people listening to this program now, um, you know, this great resignation is going on where many people are finding their jobs not to be, um, not to be taking them to this place of deeper meaning and purpose, living into their deeper values. And uh, I think, I think people are feeling weary from that from from this way of living. And in many ways, they're being called to the same conscious living that you described that my life has been and that, that I describe in my book. It's very easy, particularly in our Western culture, to fall into that consciousness of having more, of pursuing wealth, of continuing up the ladder and trying to achieve status or fame. And I think there's a real epidemic among our young people because of social media that leads them to believe that that is the holy grail that we must go after. And yet, you're right about this kind of sullen way of moving through life, this almost resignation of falling victim to the settling that has taken place And when I think of the settling, I think of it in terms of losing our own individual humanity. And when we do that, we kind of numb out or we move into the addictive quality of those pursuits. And when I read in your book about certain moments that came up, it sounds like you had certain moments that were your your pings, your wake-up calls, originating first with your your premonition about your sister uh, before her wedding so that you knew to go, and then she subsequently passing. And then there were other pings along the way 
that seem to almost have you pause to really look at life and question if you were doing what your soul, what the deeper heart within you would want to do. What would you say to the young people or even those that are our age that have kind of fallen into that resignation of thinking, well, this is as good as it gets. I'll just stay where I am. Well, I, I would share, um, this is this is such a moment right now. This great shift of the ages is going on. P- people that are listening to this program, I'm sure are feeling into that. This pivot to this whole new way of living on the earth, this, this uh, process that's taking us from... Uh, a life of weariness and where we look out our window and see this challenge with the drumbeat of global war- warming and the Ukraine war and these things uh, and where we know there's something more and this whole microcosm macrocosm thing is so real as we get healthy the world around us gets healthy and and we getting healthy is is the critical thing right now there is, of course, mystics have shared back to 450 BCE, Plato and Hippocrates and the many others that came after them, that there is no plural in consciousness, that there's a, a universal consciousness that's animating all of life. And now science has been affirming this for some number of years. Einstein, 102 years ago in 1921, said the greatest illusion in the world is the illusion of separation. And then he went on to share this longer quote that many are familiar with, a human being as a part of a whole called uh, called by us the universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences his thoughts and feelings of something as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires for a few persons nearest us, our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. And then he also shared no problem can be solved at the same level of consciousness that created it. So what this is saying is it's back to exactly what Plato and Hippocrates shared 2,500 years ago, that there's a universal consciousness animating all of life. Most of us have heard this, understand it on some level. The spiritual uh, teaching that goes alongside this, that we're made in the likeness and image of God. We've heard this, we've kind of played with the thought, but the the moment has come where uh, just hearing it and not really taking it in and embodying it and understanding this likeness and image of God for five minutes on Sunday and then forgetting it where, where that doesn't work anymore. What we're in humanities team, what we're sharing is this is our Galileo moment. And and what we mean by that is in the early 1600s, this man Galileo had his telescope and observed that we were not what ultimate reality was perceived as being true, that uh, then they believed the earth was the center of the universe. And he said, hey, you know, we we are actually, the earth is in a solar system at the edge of the universe, and we revolve around the sun, uh, which doesn't sound like such a big deal, but it was back then when everything, including sacred text, said that the earth was the center of the universe. He was put under house arrest for this, and he actually had to recant his research in order to not be killed. Uh, So to the end of his life, he was under house arrest. Um, Even though he recanted, others had telescopes and observed the same thing, that the Earth was not the center of the universe. And so the world changed as a result of his research and his courage. Now, we're, we're at a similar moment where... We all grew up with this science of the physical, you know, a physical body that goes to bones and dust and six feet under at the end of our life. Uh, Science is affirming 
that yes, that's true. We live in physical bodies. There's a physical universe. But what science is affirming now is it's actually a spiritual universe that we're inhabiting physical bodies uh, for for this lifetime, this particular lifetime. Uh, there's a great deal of science here. I don't. I already read a few quotes. But uh, Max Planck and Erwin Schrödinger and the Nobel Prize for Physics in October of last year that talked about entanglement, which is a feature of this spiritual universe. Uh, and a spiritual universe means it's that everything's energy, that it's a vibrational universe. That means in our daily practice, we've got to create processes for staying in a high vibration so that we experience joy. Uh, this is This is one of the features of conscious living. So this moment is such a critical moment to really reach beyond these old understandings, just as Galileo did. One man was able to do it for all of us back in the early 1600s. Today, in what we're calling this Galileo moment, all of us need to stand up and share that we're so much more than our physical bodies. There's a, It's a spiritual universe. And then, and that's just sharing the awareness of what is so. That's just helping to educate others. Then the important part, and what creates this massive change for ourselves and the world around us, is where we live into this truth and embody this truth, as as you do, Simran, and as you're sharing uh, during this program, and as you write about, and as you teach about, where we live into uh, who we really are, this roomy quote of the the, the whole ocean in a drop. And the whole ocean, one of its features is everlasting life. Another feature is unlimited potential. Again, an energy and a universe that is energy. And that and there's no upper end to energy. So uh really living into that. And uh you shared in your question, you know, was there a moment there? And you mentioned my sister Marine's passing, uh, which was one of the moments. Uh, there was another moment after that. My sister Marine's passing was a moment that I described in the book where I was, uh, you know, this middle kid that grew up with next to nothing. And there I am in Silicon Valley and I'm uh, working really hard, working through weekends and things. And my sister calls me and says, will you, will you come to my wedding, Steve? And, and I, it's hard to believe and it's embarrassing to share uh, what I, what, how I responded, I responded that I'm crazy busy and I work through weekends and I'll, I'll try and let's see what's possible. And, uh, I know it broke my sister's heart that I didn't right then congratulate her and say, what are the dates and put it on my calendar. And of course, that night, as I share in the book, I, uh, dreamed that she died and it was a really real dream. And, and I thought she had died. And I called her the next morning and when she answered the phone, it was like, oh, my God, you know, I wouldn't miss your, your wedding for the world. And then I went to her wedding a few months later and, and then she did die shortly after uh, her wedding. Uh, so that was a moment that uh, certainly turned my life in a new direction in terms of creating new priority. And, and then another moment was when I sat in my townhouse and sat with with two truths, understanding that only one truth can be real. One, that I'm primarily the son of Joe and Linda. And I will go to, at the end of my life, it, it'll be over. And the other truth, that my parents are like an airport terminal. They were the ones that delivered me to the earth. But just as with you and everybody, each of your listeners, that we're actually coming from source, from the divine, from from God. We're we're in in fact, this I call it this universal consciousness or intelligence, loving presence. That we're we are that. So we're an emanation actually of the one here in in at this extraordinary moment on earth. So I sat with these two truths. Okay, Steve, you can't you can't have one foot in one world and another foot in another world which truth is real and are you going to live your life from and i and i decided it was that second truth that that i'm here uh, an emanation of source of god of the divine and and that was when my whole life did indeed shift
and all these things that you shared, uh, these moments when uh, in Silicon Valley, when I decided I was going to sell these companies, I was going to leave this business association where I was working with uh, the center of wealth creation, the guy that runs the largest real estate equity investment trust in the world, REIT, the governor of California, uh, Gavin Newsom. These these people were all in my in my business chapter, and uh, I I came to that moment where I needed to to leave business and sell everything and leave everything and move my family to Boulder, Colorado. And and people thought I was crazy. My own family, one of the members of my family flew out to say, Steve, you know, <laughs> God, you're, you're holding a lottery ticket in one hand and you've got a lighter in the other hand. What are you doing? Um, so, and, and this is part of the conscious journey. We do come up against these moments where the worldly noise is, is, uh, is very loud. Uh, and it very- wasn't the first time because I loved reading in your book about the moment where commercial real estate offered an opportunity for w- quick wealth. But at IBM, you'd have this chance to receive top notch training. And so you took the training and that really illustrated to me that you had a growth oriented mindset that you were willing to be the journey as opposed to uh, looking for the destination, even at that time. And that that was another one of those moments where you kind of had that long-range view, and perhaps you were conscious of it, and perhaps you were not in the moment, but something inside of you did know to choose a different way rather than the quick pill that was in the moment. And I think that when people think about, you know, who they're supposed to be and how to make a difference or even that brilliant, profound shift moment of having a foot in two worlds and consciously deciding who was your master. So often it's an intellectual thought that sinks in, sometimes staying, sometimes going. But what had it dropped down below the neck? so that it sat within your heart, within your gut, took root within your legs and in your feet, and became your walking path, step by step, regardless of the challenges that came up in front of you. Life is such a precious thing. It it is such a precious thing. And gosh, where we really understand that and understand how loved we are, we're an emanation of the one. How, How could the one not but love us to the end of the earth, understanding every hair on our head. We, we are loved that much, all of us, every single one of us. We are a part of source of, of the divine, of God. And, and where we uh, understand this precious moment, this life that, we're, that we have and how loved we are, and where we then the spillover effect always works, where we receive that love, and then where we spill that love over, to others around us through the work that we do and how we live in our home and in the community and in the world, then we take full advantage of this precious moment, this life that we were given. Uh, and, and so often I think it, it's seductive to, uh, to listen to the worldly noise and to accumulate and these things. But again, I am not the first one I can promise that every listener here listening to this program now uh, has heard many, many times that this materiality thing, this American dream, this mirage oasis out on the horizon keeps moving. Uh, they've heard this many times. In my book, I even share of a billionaire, Ken Baring, even owned the Seattle Seahawks uh, NFL football team, and then a 737 jet, all these things. And and he said, uh, he said, until I turned 80, I couldn't really find happiness. And then from age 80 to 92, when he passed, he started his wheelchair foundation. And the wheelchair foundation was giving wheelchairs away to people all over the world to provide mobility to a person, but also to the family that were carrying this person around. The whole family was actually tied to this lack of mobility. And the simple gesture of giving away wheelchairs uh, just lit him up. And and he, he said, 
at the end of his life, my God, I finally found it. I found what I have been searching for. Uh, so this is the thing, just inviting people again. I, I know that many people listening are have their own forms of cognitive dissonance. There's there's a little tapping there on the shoulder. There's a there's a whisper that there's more. And where we trust it, where we trust that vision that we're given, what I'm calling that still small voice, we're always given provision. Where we where we're given the vision, we're always given provision, which means where we're given guidance, we're always given support. And I just would uh, invite people to live into it. And this is how then we come into the fullness of this precious lifetime opportunity we've been given. That's wonderful. It's it's a beautiful expression to help begin leading people from their defined version of success toward looking to an experience of fulfillment, which you also relay in the book in such profound ways. When we come back from the commercial break, we're going to talk more to Steve Farrell about a new universal dream. Humanity's team uses the five steps to peace from the new revelations in Neil Donald Walsh's Conversations with God as an anchor in all that we are being and doing. Peace will be attained when we as human beings, number one, permit ourselves to acknowledge that some of our old beliefs about God and about life are no longer working. Number two, explore the possibility that there is something we do not understand about God and about life, the understanding of which could change everything. Number three, announce that we are willing for new understandings of God and life to now be brought forth, understandings that could produce a new way of life on this planet. Number four, courageously examine these new understandings, and if they align with our personal inner truth and knowing, enlarge our belief system to include them. And number five, express our lives as a demonstration of our highest beliefs rather than as a denial of them. They include the five steps to peace in the statement of direction that they follow. You can find out more about Humanities Team and Humanities Team Plus streaming service by going to humanitiesteam.org and find out more about Steve by going to stevefarrell.org. You can find both of those links in the show notes. And when you're ordering his book, A New Universal Dream, I invite you to also take a look at my new trilogy. The first book is Living the Seven Blessings of Human Experience. This is the aspect of you that is the identity, the personality that is walking in the world, very much unconscious, thinking that you're conscious. It will take you through all levels of your being so that you can rise into a higher octave of expression to serve the world in a greater way. The second book is Being the Seven Illusions that Derail Personal Power, Purpose, and Peace. This book depicts the aspect of you that is not only the shadow, but the animal that is hungry, that is gorging on this planet. It will take you into the monster and even the parts of yourself that hold the demon energies that then translate into the world as some of the things that we see reflecting back to us. And the third book is Knowing the Seven Human Expressions of Grace. This is your introduction to your humanity. This is where you have the flowering of all that has to happen to open you to your highest self to serve a greater good. The three books encompass your multidimensional being, and I invite you to explore what those are for you. We'll be right back with more of Steve Farrell with Humanities Team and his new book, A New Universal Dream, to continue more of this beautiful conversation Again, his websites are humanitiesteam.org and stevefarrell.org. We'll be right back. Follow Voice America at facebook.com forward slash voice America for juicy updates from your favorite radio shows and podcasts. Have you seen 1111? Do you wonder why certain numbers keep showing up in your life? 11, 111, 22, 33, 444. People all over the world are seeing 1111 and learning the language of universal communication. Subscribe to 1111 Magazine today, www.1111mag.com. 
1111 Magazine is a bi-monthly print publication that offers a rich, multi-sensory experience. As you engage with experts and topics of consciousness, become enlightened, empowered, and energized so you live a passionate and authentic life of conscious choices. 1111 Magazine, a daily staple for lifting the mindset, discovering the heart, and stepping into conscious living. 1111 Magazine. Order now at www.1111mag.com. 1111mag.com. Do you want more, more joy, more abundance, more power and presence? How would it feel to have more loving relationships, more empowered community, greater fulfillment and life purpose? The 1111 Mastermind Community inspires, empowers, guides and supports transformation. Shift your mind, expand your heart, deepen insights, let go and chart a new course, dream a new dream. The 1111 Mastermind Community is an online portal for personal transformation and soulful expansion. Go to courses.1111mag.com. That's courses.1111mag.com. Change begins with you. Let it be simple, convenient, and transformative. The time is now. Step through the 1111 Gateway. Courses.1111mag.com. Live up to your fullest potential. This is the Voice America Empowerment Channel. You are listening to 1111 Talk Radio. Simron is an award-winning author, publisher of 1111 Magazine, powerful speaker of wisdom, and a life mentor. Find out more at imsimron.com. Now, back to 1111 Talk Radio. My guest today is Steve Barrow, and we are discussing his new book, A New Universal Dream. He began to really explore how he wanted to serve in a greater way just after 9-11. And this is a very powerful moment that we are in because we must pause and be silent and understand what the world means. The duality, the challenge, the conflict, the darkness, and the light. And he says at 9-11 that most people he was in touch with shared his concerns about the planetary crisis that is confronting us. They agreed that the Earth might become uninhabitable if we continued burning fossil fuels and releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. They also agreed that social injustice was threatening the lives and quality of life for too much of the planet's population. But oftentimes the conversation stopped there when he was speaking with others. They all thought he was unwise to lead the business world to pursue a spiritual calling. But he followed what his calling was asking of him. And that go went on to lead to a co-found humanities team worldwide with Neil Donald Walsh, the author of Conversations with God. There is a 4P model, people, planet, presence, and profit, that Steve talks about in the book. Because of the mischaracterizations of those words, Humanity's team encourages everyone to deeply consider the following questions. What if there is no separation between us and God? And he slash she is talking to us all of the time. What if our conscious, conscience and imagination are actually God's inspiration? What if God's relationship with us is loving and doesn't call upon us to fear him slash her? What if we lived our lives as a demonstration of our highest and grandest beliefs? Shortly after the creation of Humanity's Team, Neil described Humanity's Team in one of his Conversations with God books as being called a civil rights movement of the soul. Imagine that. Imagine how powerful that would be if we had a civil rights movement of the soul. What powerful words, Steve, because we are at this real shift of the ages, as you said before, this turning point where things can really change. And congratulations upon coming on the 20th anniversary of Humanities Team. It began June of 2003, and here we are in 
2023 and the amount of growth and expansion, service and inclusion that Humanities Team has grown into since that time is tremendous in not only how you're serving, but the example that it illustrates that if we truly hold a seed of service and we allow life to lead us, then we will find the path that takes us where we're destined to serve in that highest way. Talk a little bit about uh, what what you did after leaving Silicon Valley, because I know that in my own way, there has to be a pause. You can't just dive right into something else. Otherwise, the ego's operating all over again, and you'll just recreate the same thing. So talk about the period of pause that you allowed yourself to wait for the invitation to come. Yeah, that pause, it was about a two-year pause. As you mentioned in the book, I describe how on September 10th, 2001, the day before 9-11, my uh, second company sold. We sold it, uh, it was called Natagy. We sold it to a company that was based in New York City. And uh, Stephanie and I actually were down in Big Sur that evening of September 10. Uh, we woke up on September 11, like everybody else, with these uh, video, uh, with television sharing of these two uh, towers that were coming down in, in New York City. Um, I wouldn't be sitting here today if uh, if those agreements hadn't been signed on the 10th. It was one of many miracles along the way. Um, and, and to that point, where we surrender into this larger self, where we understand we're a cell in the body of, of, of life, of the universe, of God, where and where we do that in the most pure way that we know how, then miracles actually happen everywhere. This was one of many miracles that I described in the book, where we were waking up to all of what was happening out in the world and uh, where I now was free to two years later uh, start launch humanities team with Neil Donald Walsh, as you mentioned, in Wilsonville, Oregon there in June 2003. There were two years where I did sit in reflection and where I deepened into my daily practices. Uh, daily practices are so crucial when we talk about conscious living. And of course, that means the prayer, meditation in the morning and evening, and oftentimes in the afternoon. But those are just actually the anchoring points, because for me and for most people that I talk to, we carry that same intention and metaphysical um, throughout the day, where we're in this kind of circuit or this frequency or this connection or this cohesion with uh, nature and and the universe around us, this beautiful sky at night, um, and where that daily practice then deepens into something so much more, holistic living, where, uh, where we're paying attention to everything, what we eat, what we drink, uh, how we sleep, um, what we watch, what we listen to, what clothes we wear, and I could keep going on. Holistic living is just that holistic living where we're really paying uh, attention to all of the ways that we're living our life. Um, and then that leads into the, 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 uh, the massive thing for all of us, this whole Gandhi thing of, are we, are we being the change that we wish to see in the world? And, um, and that's a challenging one because as, as we look into our life, uh, for myself and most people I know, there are particular things in how we're living our life where we feel like we're maybe not living up to it as well as we could. So for me, as an example, uh, with homeless, whether it's with money or uh, a certificate of some kind, to really uh, reach as deeply into my pocket as I'm capable, not just with a one or even a five, but but more than that. Um, this is one small example, but where we're really uh, being the change that we want to see in the world, because that's how we uh, experience the fullness of conscious living. And that's how it spreads this microcosm, macrocosm thing. It's not by what we share. 
you know, what we believe and what our voice articulates, it's the, it's our expression that people can feel into. It's our life lived. Um, this is what creates that contagion out in the world. The beginning of my spiritual path actually began with Neil Donald Walsh's book, Conversations with God. The mentor that I began with at that time was Ayanna Van Zant, And she always had this saying, and it was, you don't fit your spirituality into your life. You fit your life into your spirituality. So I really appreciate that conversation of practice and alignment and conscious living that must go hand in hand as we open to that God self within to align with that greater divine plan. And being someone that has always been in leadership that steered huge companies that had tremendous human resources uh, surrounding you that you would direct and inspire and manage. In moving into this kind of service and organization, it required a different kind of alignment that was also the discernment of attracting and choosing the individual's that met your values, that met the culture that was to be created, that met the level of service that was to unfold. And so often when individuals are on a quest to create something and they're wanting to change the world, that is the very moment that the shadow can creep in and have people take shortcuts or not think about who they're bringing into their sacred fold to create something that is to be so sacred. How did you maintain a level of discernment and attraction that kept humanity's team aligned to the vision that you and Neil were putting out? The, the, the premise of my book, which speaks to this, is that there is this universal consciousness animating all of life. And uh, we could, some like to use the, the more science terms like universal consciousness and cosmos and things, we actually use the spiritual terms and humanities team because it more brings in the fullness of how we can live our life, that this is the divine. We're an emanation of the divine. Um, that I, well, I'm calling it the central premise. It's al also what I'm going to call the central promise because I do believe a hundred percent. This, this is not a speculation. Uh, science is affirming this is true. So I'm going to call it not just a premise, but a promise. The second one then that connects with that is that that we're actually designed to be part of the one, which means that there's a, a wholeness as well as a oneness. And in the wholeness, we all, if we want to, we're invited to, to bring our gifts, our contributions, our, our uh, loving presence, our, our most mature self to our daily living in all facets of our life without partitioning it anywhere. You can't partition it in the workplace. Uh, I, of course you can. There's freedom to do anything that you want, but your conscience will let you know if you're partitioning. Uh, the third premise or promise that follows is that more we give ourselves away, the better we feel. Uh, that's That then uh, is an extension of this that we're designed as part of the one. The scientists say that we're sovereign to this one body uh, conversations with God says we are all one. Uh, and every time it talks to the reader, it capitalizes who you are, who you are. It's always capitalized. And, and this is the likeness and image of God thing of where, you know, do you know who you are? Uh, I mean, really know uh, on a, on a, because if you, if you really believe and understand and are living into this notion that you, that, the God sent his son or daughter, you, every listener here, to be here now on this planet during the great shift of the ages. Uh, that invites so much uh, in terms of possibility. Now, Simran, you bring in shadow. So where, where does shadow come in here? What is what is its role? Um, I, I find that this is a very personal thing, uh, which is quite different from person to person. And... Uh, so for me, 
you could call it uh, temptation, you know, that uh, will be there in certain instances um, where we, I'm going to just keep coming back to the beautiful premise of this loving, benevolent, not malevolent. And I grew up in the Catholic church. I was an altar boy, but, but, but benevolent um, God that loves us to the end of the earth and beyond. And this is so important that we, we take the raincoat off, so to speak, you know, where we don't let that loving energy in, where we let that loving energy in, where we really deeply understand that and know that we're a part of the one and loved to the end of the earth by the one, uh, then what I find is that shadow, which could be temptation or could be listening to the worldly noise of manifestation or something, uh, or materiality, uh, that we... Uh, it, it, we as mature individuals just hear it, feel it, and let it and and, and decide no. We we this isn't. We're not going to uh, follow the role the 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 path of temptation. Uh, we're not going to follow the path of just materiality. Uh, and again, as I was stating earlier, the more that we really give give ourselves to that, surrender to that, be in service to that. Um, the the more uh, magnificent our our manifesting and the health and well being and our the 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 stronger and and more powerful our role that we're playing in the world and there's even a boomerang effect I find where um, where we give of ourselves in a pure way and I like the home that I, I live in now in Boulder it's the one thing uh, that I still have from Silicon Valley days it's a really beautiful home. I'm on a on a budget like everybody else because I left that uh, eight figure world over 20 years ago, but um, it, it, I was actually led to the home as I was led to my wife, as I was led to my two kids who were adopted, as I was led to my partners and colleagues in humanities too, who are, who are extraordinary and who are doing this work with me. So um, I would just say to to shadow and temptation and these things. Um, where we're strong in that daily practice and we do live holistically as I described uh, and where we do our best to be the change that we want to see in the world. Um, it uh, It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> we sleep really well at night. It, uh, life becomes really delicious. I love, love what you shared and it really brings home that place of oneness. I think that there's a disservice that the personal growth world and self-help world have done, and that is this construct of be more of who you are, but it's being pointed at the ego identity and that attainment place, that rise to fame. I love how you're pointing towards that more of who you are is the divine is the expression of the divine through you. That is one of the points that I share very strongly in my second book of the trilogy being it's under the illusion of identity and really anchoring into what and who our true identity are. The concept of oneness can also be one of those very etheric or nebulous words that can be thrown around by spirituality. And I love how in the book, you provide a very practical way of expressing how you started shifting on a daily basis into oneness. And I'd like to read that section. I never wanted to risk any employee feeling they were being diminished or talked down to with a sticky message. And it was because you had this way of putting sticky notes on people's computers to let them know of something that needed to be done prior to that. So that was something that you ceased doing. You also say, I'd also been a big proponent of time management systems. I had scripted everything out before my week begun so I could directly manage the things that needed to get done. I now realized my time management style was putting me in a mindset of delegating work to my team instead of working with them. I needed to throw out my daily planner because it left no space for real two-way communication with deep listening from the heart. There was nothing sacred in this way of leading and managing. That right there is a huge practical shift that probably for some individuals is having them going to freak out about throwing out their daily planner and their lists of things to do. And for others, it's having them sit back and take a deep breath 
of even considering working with and listening to as opposed to uh, the ways that the world so often conditions us into. Are there any other practical ways that you can share that, and we just have about uh, two minutes left in the show, are there any other practical ways you can share that people can embody oneness starting today? Well, uh, some things real quick. One, education. It's why you mentioned this Humanity Stream Plus platform. We're a 501c3 nonprofit. We were called to create a conscious streaming platform and make it very affordable. And even to give it away, we have a one for one. So it's very affordable. It has all of this conscious education uh, there from scientists, spiritual leaders, embodied practices, etc. And for people that can't afford it, especially outside of this country, we we give it away uh, as part of our one for one. Uh, the next step is embodying and and expressing what we come to know. Uh, it's you wouldn't sit down to a meal and not eat the meal. <laughs> so the whole the 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 beautiful thing and this delicious living comes from eating the meal. The, so embodying and expressing these practices. And the third is is engaging uh, others, just like we are here now, inviting people to live into this beautiful way of living. Um, I'm just going to mention quickly one other thing. Uh, there's transactional style of, of of being in the world. As you mentioned, I threw out my day planner. We then move over to relational, uh, which is where we're more in a connected state with other people. But we actually leave that too on this conscious journey to something more transformational, to uh, divine presence. You mentioned those four Ps earlier, divine presence. And in divine presence, it even goes beyond relational, where really we know ourselves on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis as part of this one, of, of God, of the divine, and where we uh, feel the the sacred, actually, in every interaction with, with people. Uh, it, this is, again, where we enter into this delicious style of living. So uh, I would invite people to just con- think into your life. Where is the transactional and where is the relational that leaves out the divine presence uh, dimension, which is the most beautiful dimension? Beautiful points to leave our listeners with. In Humanities Teams, grassroots promotions, they emphasize the idea that we are all one. They believe that this was the message of all humanity that was needing to be heard and embraced. They present We Are All One as an answer to some big questions, such as, what is the one idea that can end all violence in the world? What is the one idea that can build a lasting peace between diverse cultures? What is the one idea that can end hunger and poverty on every continent? What is the one idea that can restore our planet's environment? The Around the World in Oneness World Tour had ambitious intentions. The first was to raise awareness of humanity's oneness. I invite you to explore humanitiesteam.org to go ahead and subscribe to Humanities Team Plus and begin streaming their programs so that you have the growth that you need to align to a greater you. And most definitely pick up Steve Farrell's book, A New Universal Dream, and activate that in your life. Thank you, Steve, for being on 1111 Talk Radio. Until next week, I am Simran. In love, of love, with love, and as love, be well. Thank you for opening your mind to a new reality, your heart to greater compassion, and your experience of aliveness with 1111 Talk Radio. Join host Zimron next Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern Time to step through the gateway of conscious living here on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. Remember... You are not on the journey. You are the journey.